Look at this. Right. This train is driving itself. Nuclear power plants run themselves. I don't tell each neutron to fission. Though you still need operators, instrumentation, and about 10,000 safety checks. And it's changing the way that you get stuff. Usually, traditional trains are great for long routes, like LA to Chicago. But if you live in a smaller town, stuff can sit for days mm. until there's enough to justify a huge train to carry it. So your stuff might end up on trucks instead. The US has about three oh, times as many miles going. of railroad as highways, but only 8% of goods are shipped on them. But most railways are low capacity spurs, not main lines. This is a bit like saying, well, the US has hundreds of research reactors, so why don't we have them power the grid? And that's because scale design and infrastructure matter more than. So what a company is doing is they're taking ordinary rail cars and they're upgrading them with batteries and sensors and software and motors so that instead of waiting for a big locomotive like this to pull them, they can drive themselves and they can pull five or ten others. Now that's interesting. That would be the equivalent of instead of having a reactor core, having a fuel rod or micro reactor by itself have its own turbine system. An interesting idea, but logistically questionable. Also, battery energy density is far lower than that of diesel fuel. And this coordination would be way harder than just driving a handful of trains. And each car carries about the same as three or four trucks. So fewer semi-trucks on highways, less pollution, less crashes. Trucks have greater flexibility though. These trains aren't gonna drive on the road. The infrastructure problem is just as big as the core technology problem, just like with fusion or small modular reactors.